Well, hello, friend. Uh, welcome to today's daily Bible study uh, here at COC TV. Uh, my name is Keith Hatcher, and I am one of the ministers and elders here at Cross of Christ Community Church. And I'm going to be uh, conducting the daily Bible study uh, starting uh, as of today. And we're just so glad today that you could be uh, join us and be with us. And the Bible declares that this is the day that the Lord has made to let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you're saved, if you're sanctified, and if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you ought to be rejoicing. But if you're not, I got some good gospel news for you. You can be. Well, the Bible says with God, there is nothing that is impossible. Amen. Once again, we're so glad that you've joined us here on the daily Bible study. Uh, this is going to be our first teaching here as we've started the daily Bible studies back. And I'm going to be using for a uh, subject uh, for probably the next few weeks or as the Lord may lead, the subject on doctrine. Uh, it's not a real popular word in the church uh, today. Uh, but the but the word doctrine we find it in the New Testament almost sixty times that the word doctrine is used and anything that the Lord or the Holy Spirit pins almost sixty times there has to be an importance to it and 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 these next few weeks that uh, coming up we're going to be. Uh, studied and going into the to the Word of God and and digging out and seeing just how poor important doctrine is in the church. We're going to find out if doctrine is something that that is past or is doctrine something that God still wants us uh, to teach and 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 have in the church today. But we're going to do a study and it's going to be involving. Uh, doctrine. Doctrine is just simply teaching or something that taught. And here, uh, biblical doct doctrine really refers to the truths, uh, uh, or you could say doctrine, use the word doctrine in the word truths here, it really f refers to the truths of God's Word. Uh, if you've got your Bible, turn with me over into Philippians chapter uh, number three, we want to see what the word of the Lord says there. Chapter number three, verses eight and ten here. D the word doctrine, doctrine here is a means to know God. That, that's something you need to remember. It's a means to know God. Listen to what Paul says in Philippians 3, verse 8 and 10. He said in verse 8, he said, I count it all done. Then when you go down into verse 10, it said that I may know him. In other words, doctrine here is a means to know God. God's word is a means to know him. Anytime we get sound doctrine or doctrine or God's word taught, it is a means for us to know God. Paul said, I count it all done that I may know him. That's the most important thing for a Christian today is to know God. See, we're living in a time when the church does not teach sound doctrine. Sound here means healthy. The church does not have a, a healthy teaching of sound doctrine. Listen to what Peter says in Second Peter 4 and in verse... Let's start with the first verse and read it. And it says, And I charge thee, therefore, 
before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Verse 2 says, and he says, Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Verse 3 tells us here that there is coming a time that will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Listen to what Paul is telling young Timothy. He said, there is coming a time when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now, he's talking about the church here. But they will, after their own lust, shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. That, that is sound doctrine. That's, that's healthy doctrine here. He's talking to the church. He said, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn unto fables. I like to call that word silliness. There's a lot of silliness that goes on in the church today. Silliness is unhealthy. When we when we look at when we look at the word of God, when you look over into Revelation chapter number three, we see the church here in chapter three of Revelation, starting at the fourteenth verse. And this is the apostate church here. This this is the this is the church age here that we're living in. This this is who Timothy, uh, that Paul is telling Timothy that there will come a time when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now, now listen, listen to what uh, Jesus is saying here in chapter three of Revelation. He says here, he says, and unto the angel of the church of Laodicea and write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning and the creation of God. He says, I know thy works, that thou art neither hot nor cold, and I would thou work cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. But because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods. that That's where the, the apostate church is today. This This is where we're living where the majority of the church has apostatized and and it, and it's saying here that I am increased with goods the church today has a whole lot of stuff it has the silver and the gold but it doesn't have the power are you hearing what i'm saying listen to what it says and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And he said in verse 18, And I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, and thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Verse 19 says, And as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. This is the church that has no need of anything, but yet Jesus here is telling this church to repent. Verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. This is the church that has the Lord on the outside and not the inside. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him and sup with him and over, and he with me. To him that overcome will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even with thy father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Here, this church is saying that, that they have no need of nothing, that they're rich and they're increased. But look with me back over into Isaiah chapter number 1, and I think we we see the picture of, of this apostate church 
that says they that they, that they are increased with goods and have need of nothing but see man looks at things one way but god sees them another look in verse 5 it says the whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint from the sole of the foot even unto the head there is no soundness in other words there is no sound doctrine no healthy doctrine it's just like a person that doesn't eat healthy. They're going to become sick and weak. It says, from even from the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and petrifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Here we have a picture, I believe, of the apostate church here in Revelation, another uh, picture of the apostate church in Revelation chapter 3 that says they have no need of anything, but then we get a picture of it, I believe, in Isaiah chapter 1, and I just read verses 5 and 6, where the Bible says that the, that the church is sick. It's In other words, it's unhealthy. When you do not have sound doctrine you're going to have an unhealthy church. When you as an individual does not hear and partake of sound doctrine and, 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 and just feasting on silliness and foolishness that's going around in the, in the church today, we're going to, to, to wind up with, with a, a sick relation, sick, a sick salvation, a sick spirit, that, that the Lord had, that doesn't will, but he wants us to have sound doctrine. And listen, sound doctrine always is, it, it, it's very center and it's very core is this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with this right here this morning. It's sound core, sound doctrine it has right in its midst Jesus Christ and him crucified. That must be the, the core of sound doctrine. Until next time, God bless.